friends! Today I'm a couple thousand miles from where I usually reside in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm back in my hometown in South Carolina. I'm gonna be making my way to the coastline for a beach trip soon, and you'll probably hear more about that at a later time, but I anticipate some photo walks coming out of that as well. However, I'm in my downtown of my hometown, which is not a particularly hopping downtown, if you will. I, w I wouldn't call it full of energy and life, even though there, you know, there's cars and p things moving around. It's a small town, but this is a good example of attempting to pull off a, oh gosh, there's a wasp. There's more bugs on this side of the country. Anyway, this is a good example of attempting to pull off a photo walk, including people in a small town. We're gonna see how it goes. It might be a bit of a challenge. I'm hanging out here because this is a bit of an interesting situation. You have this pink wall, you have a lion, you have a plant. Interesting old lamp. If someone walks by and I got a nice photo of that, that would be just alright. Patience. What I just experienced was one of the more frustrating things in street photography. I was waiting for a specific girl to walk back by here. She went in a store that way, so I assumed she would come back by. She did. However, when she did, after five minutes of nobody, two other people happened to come by at the same time, so there was just a cluster of legs and, and flying ligaments. It looked quite painful, but it also messed up my shot, and that was rather frustrating. Where are we going? Do I get a uh, friend discount? So, you may be aware that I'm now in a car. And the reason why is because I found my friend, who uh, is a very close friend of mine. We've spent a lot of time together growing up. All sorts of wonderful friendship things have happened. This is my friend, Reese. Hello. He, he came by, and I just hear a high-pitched squeal. I don't know what James! Hey, James! <laughs> so, um, I'm in his car. I don't know where we're going. Put your seatbelt on. Oh, I should probably put my seatbelt on. Reese is in the process of, or it has already become a police officer? In, the, you... in the training. The okay, training. so you're not a general yet. How you been, man? I'm good. That's good. So good. We got done with work early, just got done at Betsy's. Okay. Had a piece of cake that was about this big. Wow. All right. I'm so good. That's good. So good. That's good. Yeah, I was, uh, I was on a little bit of a photo walk. So the reason I'm here is because I, uh, I'm here for a family vacation. To go, you know, to go to the beach. Mm. And to Myrtle Beach? Yeah. <laughs> I'm spending a couple of days here before I make my way that direction. And so I decided I'm gonna make a photo walk video for my channel and attempt to do street photography here, which is not the easiest feat. Because there's not as many people as in Salt Lake City, for example. That's true. You know? Okay, so I don't know where we're going, I don't know where he's taking me. I'm gonna hope for the best. Hopefully it doesn't end up in some sort of, like, I'm gonna end up in some sort of North Korean prison camp again. Uh, but I'll be back soon. Thanks for the conversation. Anytime. Have a good day. Cheers. That was a lot of fun. We've been good friends for a very long time now, and I'm glad I ran into him. Okay, I will return to this wall, but first, I need lunch. Okay, I'm having a pleasant sitting. I have water. I got a sandwich called the Turknado. It's apparently turkey and a tornado. I don't know how I'm gonna eat it. Great sandwich. Everyone died from the tornado. And back to the pink wall of patience. Okay, after waiting for what felt like an eternity, I 
think I got a couple of usable ones. The way that the situations tend to go is you will have a long span of no people and then you'll have a cluster of interesting people all at once and you have to be ready to bounce like a cheetah. It's a weird thing because there's a certain point where you have to make a decision on if you want to stay in this spot that you love so dearly, try to squeeze something out of it, or move on. There's opportunity either direction. Moving on. has great audio. I should have been filming in here the entire time. The quiet also provides for an incredibly soothing environment. Thank you so right, much. See you I'm back at the house and this is the house that I grew up in and when I say I grew up here I mean that quite literally. From the age of two until I moved out I lived in this brick house. I'm standing in my backyard and this backyard means a lot to me. When I was growing up, it was three acres of a creative playground of endless opportunity. As a kid, when I was inside, I had quite a few toys and lots of matchbox cars in particular. But when I was outside, I had uh, maybe two or three that I would play with consistently. I had my toy guns and I had a few prominent ones. One of them resembled a Beretta M9. It was, a, it was a handgun, and then I had my toy M16, which was my pride and joy. I bought it on eBay, and I kept it forever. The stock broke off the back of it, and I taped it back on <laughs> and kept playing with it. I also had a very special toy, though. And this toy was not meant to be a toy. It was actually a PVC pipe. And this PVC pipe would turn into anything that I wanted it to turn into. One day it's a sword, the next day it's a spear, the next day it's a bow and arrow, the next day it's a hockey stick, the next day it's an axe. I had outdoor concerts and it would turn into a guitar. Sometimes I became a rescuer and I had to save somebody from a car, a burning car with the jaws of life. And that pipe turned into the jaws of life. I remember these times from growing up so vividly because this was every day for me. I would walk out of the house and go on an adventure. The creative centerpiece for my backyard was my playhouse, not to be confused with a tree house. There's a tree near it, but not it's not built on a tree, so to speak. This handcrafted one-of-a-kind playhouse was made up of a wooden platform that my dad built, a wooden playground from my cousin's house, and an old greenhouse that he put on top of the platform, built railings, connected the two together with a bridge, and built a staircase up the side. It's no longer there, but there used to be a trampoline that we put next to the wooden playground, and we built a deck on top of it to jump off of onto the trampoline. We would also jump off of the railing, which was higher onto the trampoline, do backflips and such. It was fantastic. But this playhouse too would transform into anything my mind could turn it into. A ship, a submarine, a helicopter. Had like a control panel on the side of the, play, uh, the top of the playground and that would be my flight controls if I wanted them to be. I've always been an introverted type and I can have plenty of fun on my own and I spent 90% of my time in this yard playing alone. Just creating worlds of imagination and excitement and things to overcome and wars to win and this sort of thing. I also flipped a go-kart in this spot and got stuck up under it. It was one of the top five near-death experiences of my life. This area would transform into a battleground where armies would collide much like that of Lord of the Rings with swords and spears and fight for something they believe in. By the way, one time I shot a short film out here about chopping down a tree with a butter knife. Sadly, it never won any awards. I used to pretend that this satellite dish was a satellite dish that shot lasers. My parents always encouraged this creative playfulness in me, even into my adulthood. And as adults, we start to take on new roles. But there's no reason to be rid of the old role of, of childlike creativity. I think it's important, I think it's, inv it's valuable to maintain. I think in the pursuit of our goals, we put these harsh expectations on ourselves. We pursue perfection, we avoid failure, and if we're not careful, this has the ability to hinder 
playful and experimental creativity. And I'm not talking about a creativity free from structure. I'm talking about a creativity that if you're a musician, may allow you to try something new on stage, even if you don't know how it's gonna go. And being okay with that. Creativity that says, I have no idea what I'm doing with this one, but I'm trying to figure it out, and you guys are welcome to watch. <laughs> this concept has been particularly helpful to my mind, and I hope that it's helpful to yours as well. But that's it for this video. I will be going to the beach soon, and I will be creating photo walks from that environment, and I'm happy to share it with you guys if you will come along. This is technically also a yearly family vacation, but I like to create on my vacations, and I have a couple of photo walks planned out, so keep your eye out for those. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts. Have a good day.